Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech Yourself. Today is a fun video, or at least it is for me. In this box, we have the Synology Disk Station DS420 Plus 4 bay NAS unit. And today we are going to be opening it up, unboxing it, and deploying it. And I'm gonna give you uh, my initial thoughts and kind of review on the unit. So I picked this up and I also picked up four hard drives. I believe these are two terabyte each. Um, I can just check that real quick. I believe they're two terabyte. Yes, they are. They are each two terabyte Western Digital CMR drives. Um, and yeah, this is going to be great. This is for the video storage we need in the office. We do a lot of work with 1080p video, and we are running out of storage on the device we currently use as a server. It's just a Windows file share. I'm sure you'll see something up on the screen there of it. It's literally just an old Dell. And not only are we running out of space, but there is no redundancy in that unit whatsoever. So if that drive fails, the one drive that's in there, we are screwed. So this is a big and important upgrade for the office, and I'm excited to get started on it. So let's open up the box itself, set this aside for now, and see what we get with this Analogy Disk Station. That's a little smaller than I thought it was going to be. Oh, look at that. So there's the unit itself. It's the front of the unit. Uh, it's got your four drive bays on there. Go around to the back. You've got two pretty beefy cooling fans. That's pretty cool. We've got two LAN ports, a USB port, and our power in. Um, so I'm assuming that these extra boxes here have our power cord. Oh yes, and it comes with Ethernet cables. That's great. I was actually wondering about that. So we've got our power supply. Looks like we got some mounting screws and some keys. So we got keys, I guess, if you want to lock the drive bays. Other part of the power cord, very important. All right, so just to give you kind of a quick rundown here of the unit, you have four drive bays um, for your standard desktop style hard drives. Um, but you also have on the bottom here, two M.2 slots. So you can actually put M.2 drives in this machine and use those as kind of like a high speed cache. So when you're accessing files that you access frequently, they'll come uh, download or be accessed a lot faster. Now we're not gonna be using that functionality right off the bat because um, we really don't need it at this point, but it is cool to know that it is there. So why don't we um, plug this thing in, pop some drives in it and get it set up. All right, so it's all plugged in. And I've got my laptop here just so that when the time comes, I can access the UI for this guy. Um, I also have it plugged into my switch over here on the corner of my desk with an ethernet port. So let's load this thing up with some drive, shall we? The cool thing about setting up new tech products is they always come with some tasty snacks to eat after you're done. Oh, so they just kind of pop open like this. There we go, number one is done. So I noticed with these is that you have these pull tabs on either side that you have to pull off um, if you want the drive to actually fit back in. Otherwise it makes a very unpleasant and scary noise. So we've got those all in there, and I guess all that's left is to power the device on. So we're gonna press this right here. Since we've got the address, let's switch on over to the laptop and I'll show you what's going on there. All right, so here we are over in our web browser. Now the instructions say to go to find.synology.com. See what happens here. Oh, looks like it found it. So it gave it an IP address of 192.168.2.55. All right, so let's go ahead and get it set up then. Of course I read it. And set up. All right, so in an effort to save some time and move the video along here, I'm gonna fast forward through all the setup. I'm sure there are already plenty of videos demonstrating you know, that process, but in short, the setup was incredibly easy, the system walks you right through it, and I ended up creating a RAID 10 or RAID 1 plus 0 
uh, volume so that I could have four terabytes of redundant space to work with uh, out of the eight total terabytes that are in the machine. All right, so now that we have it set up and it is mappable, I am going to, oh, look at that, I can add users. Perfect, we'll leave that alone for now, but I'm gonna try and get all the data from our old video server onto the new one. So I'll probably have to grab the camera from that, uh, from the stand and bring it on back to the server room with me. So here is the old server. Not much to look at, just a desktop with a NAS hard drive in it. And you know what, it served us well. I don't regret the setup at all, but it was time for an upgrade. So now I want to get all the data that's on here over to the Synology. See if we can browse for it because the Windows file share is a disaster. Okay, it sees it. So we'll finish there and we've mapped it and it's got the cool recycle bin feature, which I think is neat. Uh, before with this system, if you delete something, um, it's gone forever. So it's kind of cool that you can do that here. So let's put this to the side, open up the old server and I'm literally just going to drag and drop. We're gonna get all this stuff, copy it, and paste it over here. See what kind of transfer speeds we get once it discovers the quite large amount of data we have. All right, we're climbing up there, getting to 20 megabytes per second, 111 megabytes per second. That is pretty good. That's closing in on our gigabit speeds, uh, which is excellent. So we've got three hours and 15 minutes of data transfer remaining. So hopefully this goes well. Um, I don't foresee any problems and uh, yeah, awesome. This is awesome. This PC, I'm probably just gonna turn into an ingest PC because it does have a card reader. So that's what this will become. So before we close out the video here, I just wanted to express how cool I think Synology's uh, user interface is here and their, their little operating system that's built onto the NAS. I mean, the amount of stuff you can do with this is just really impressive. I didn't realize how feature rich these were. I always, know, I always knew you could do a lot with a Synology NAS, but I found out you can actually run virtual machines and antivirus databases and stuff like that. And of course there's your classic like Plex and media servers and stuff like that. But it's really, really cool. And if you do end up picking one of these up, I, I do recommend looking around in the package center and, and seeing all the different apps and features they have available and see if maybe you probably find something that you didn't know it could do that you think would be really cool or would be really helpful. Obviously, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff isn't necessary for what I need the NAS to do right now, especially in a business environment. Uh, it simply needs to operate as a NAS, but it's really cool knowing all that stuff is there. All right, so that's pretty much it for the deployment. All we have to do is wait for all those files to get over there, and by tomorrow that should be done. But overall thoughts and, and opinions on this device is it was incredibly easy to set up. And it did not force me to sign up for any online, uh, online accounts, which I really appreciate. Um, it does mean I don't have access to some of the remote access features, so I can't really, you know, go anywhere else and access my files without port forwarding. Um, but that wasn't something I wanted to do anyway, and I appreciate that it didn't force me to sign up for any online accounts. And I'm obviously underutilizing this device. There are a lot of apps and uh, extra features you could add on to this. You can make it a, a surveillance system and all this kind of stuff too. Maybe that stuff we'll explore in the future, but for now, all we need it to do is store large amounts of data and provide us some integrity just in case one of our drives fail, or actually in the event that the drive, when the drive fails, I should say, because your drives will fail. So overall, incredibly happy with it. Uh, maybe some future videos on this machine in the future, if we end up going any further with it, maybe we'll add some of those SSDs for caching or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful, entertaining, helpful in some way. Subscribe if you want to, don't if you don't, and I'll see you in the next one.